So here we are at Railway Hollow. It's the uh, 29th of April. And uh, let's go down the Cave of Leaves and see if we can see one of the first trains on the newly opened Midland Line. Uh, bear with me with this. We have to fight the Woggles. Actually, I think the Woggles are friendly. <sighs> oh, look at the darkness in here. How am I not dying? Uh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, here we go. Leaves. Treacherous ground. Oh, and a cave in. Let's see. And here we are at the bottom of the train spotting thing. If I turn around, you can see lights. And on cue, here we go. Look at that, people. Look at that. Trying to needle in that one. So, let's do a wrap on this job and talk about the last things. Well, actually, possibly not, because I might do another video a bit later on as the, you know, the job continues. But, um, let's talk about some things, you know, finishing this job, getting trains to run again, and a few things I missed out in other videos. So here we are back in the lab. Why do I start everything with the word so? Well, maybe it's convenient. Anyway, while I've been doing all these uh, visits to the site and taking pictures, um, recently I've noticed some very large piling operations. Um, these are what I believe is called cast in situ piles where you drive a, a large collar or a pipe into the ground then you um, get an auger <clears throat> and you dig the material in the center of the pipe out drop in your reinforcing and fill it with concrete and then pull the pipe out um, obviously the pipe holds the sand or the dirt back while you're inserting the uh, reinforcing and the concrete and then you take the pipe out which actually has like teeth around the end of it so it can bore its way in um, and use it again uh, and I've noticed a few of these piling rigs working around the site um, and the piles they're putting in are massive they're huge they're probably more than a meter across I think uh, a bit hard to tell from outside the fence um, but they look like the sort of pile you put under a bridge pier. In a previous video, I said I had no idea what the track layout would be uh, in the junction. <clears throat> um, because I couldn't find it on the uh, Metronet webpage. But it's there. I owe them an apology. I found this the other day. Um, but not before I had come up with my own ideas of where the track plan would go, based on where I could see these large piles foundations being put in. Anyway, the way the track is now, and this is almost certainly mainly temporary, this will have to be changed again when the other half of the station is built, because remember, what we see here is only half the station. Um, we, we went from this to basically this. So there's going to be this bridge and the two center lines will be the uh, Allenbrook line and the outside tracks will, uh, the northern one will curve under the bridge and um, head off to Midland or, or the other junction that's very close by where the line splits and goes uh, east to Midland and south east to High Wycombe. The other thing I'd like to show you is a couple of machines I've observed. One is the point moving crab. I could not get video of this operating because they were having some issues with it when I was uh, there. A uh, uh, nice man let me like bend my head around the corner of the e uh, access gate without going on site so I could take some photos of it. But what this allows them to do is construct a point away from the main track uh, on a, you know, a spare bit of land and then move it across into position. This thing walks sideways like a crab, picks up the track, 
moves along sideways. What a, like seriously, this was a cool machine. It's basically its legs just go out sideways, push down, lift everything up, then move across and then just keep doing that till it's in position. Um, and I'm pretty sure it can move laterally as well. Well, that is laterally. The other, it, the other way, forwards and backwards. So in another video, it was mentioned that welded track is always under tension. They pre-tension the track before they do the welds. And then on a hot day, the track just relaxes and stays where it is instead of getting too long for itself and like breaking away from the sleepers and, and you know, going all snaky and weird. So basically you try and weld your track on a hot day when it's already expanded and then when it cools down it shrinks and goes under tension and it's you know very happy and unless you get a day that was significantly hotter than the day you welded it on. So what do you do if you're welding your track on a uh, cold day? Well you have a tensioning device and I think that's what this is here. Basically you can see this device has grabbed the track in two spots and it's pulled it basically together. Um, I, they will do a weld, um, a thermite weld in the new join and then they will take the machine away and the track will be under tension because the day that they had this machine out it was not very hot. It was like low 20s. Very low 20s. Um, so like you know come a, come a 40 degree Perth summer day that track's going to expand a lot and going to need somewhere to go and this device uh, mitigates that problem. Okay the last thing I'd like to talk about is the station itself. It's some massive concrete beams uh, put on top of these piers. And these piers themselves will be tied down to some of those very big concrete piles we talked about earlier in the video. The spans on the bridge beams are quite long, so they've actually put some large cables through them, uh, which will, under tension, will stop the beam sagging or help keep them rigid. And the other interesting thing about um, these beams is I don't think they're attached to the top of the pier in any particular way. I think they sit on what's effectively a bearing and there's a shock absorber between the bearings as you can see here. And this means when the bridge moves, because I, I imagine they're expecting it to move when it like gets hot and expands in the sun, um, or if a large train like rolls onto it flat out and then has to apply brakes heavily, it's going to push everything along a bit. These shock absorbers will um, allow the bridge to move just a little and um, you know dissipate all that energy. Well, notice the piers themselves are fluted, which makes them look rather nice. I'm calling this Doric style. Um, if you don't agree with me, have a, have at it in the comments. Have, I, I dare you. But anyway, there's going to be an opening in September and we will visit and do a video. <clears throat> it makes sense to do a bit of a wrap up. You may not know, but I have a second video channel for a board gaming hobby business thing I do where I design and publish board games. Most of them are free to print and play on my website. Um, others you can pay for and buy because I have them printed. Um, so if you would like a copy of either castle poker or 60 second cocktail um, drop over and um, give me some support I post them anywhere in Australia for free that's free postage not a free game anyway thanks for coming and watching the series uh, and maybe we'll see you in September